Today, going to consult your analyst has almost become a status symbol. With this in mind, it's our pleasure to present, all the way back from the year 1939, the famous master of psychopathology and psychology, the father of psychoanalysis, Dr. Sigmund Freud. <laughs> And the living is easy. <laughs> Dr. Freud, this is indeed a great thrill. Yeah, yeah, mein Herr. I am sorry to be almost late, but I just came from the hospital. I was giving group therapy in the psychiatric ward. I see. Was it a big crowd? No, they wasn't all there. <laughs> One of the patients was most disturbed. Kept telling me he was in love with his raincoat. Preposterous. Imagine, in love with the raincoat. His umbrella, yes, but his raincoat? <laughs> Dr. Freud, we're most anxious to know all about you. How did you happen to create psychoanalysis? Well, it started when I was a small boy in Vienna. One day, my mother comes home wearing a new dress, but her petticoat is too long. This was the first Freudian slip. <laughs> What about your father? Oh, my father. My father was a very highly suspected man. <laughs> he was a kidney and liver specialist. Oh, a doctor? No, a butcher. <laughs> that's how he was able to make both ends meet. Uh, that's an old Viennese joke. I don't care for it. Well, you never knew the old Vienna. <laughs> Now, tell us about your parents' behavior. Were they amiable? No, they were Jewish. <laughs> In those days, I was known as the friendly psychiatrist. I would lie down on the couch with the patient. <laughs> this was the start of socialized medicine. Dr. Freud, why do you always have your patients lie down on a couch? Well, actually, this is how we delve into the subconscious. The patient relaxes on the couch for a little free association. Oh? What? Oh. <laughs> My head, please, not sex. By free association, I mean talk. Nothing but talk, talk, talk. And what do you talk about? Sex. <laughs> well, now, tell us, Dr. Freud... How do you stand on sex? <laughs> Doc, Dr. Freud, I said, how do you stand on sex? Wait a minute, I'm trying to picture it. I have always felt that sex is the motivating force of the instinctual drive, and I have had only one patient who was an exception. What was his problem? He was dead. <laughs> Dr. Freud, wasn't your first book called The Interpretations of Dreams? Jawohl, dreams have a very big effect on our lives. One patient, every night for months, every night, dreaming the numbers five and two, five and two. Then he goes to the racetrack, bets on number eight, and wins a fortune. Oh, but five and two is seven. You got the education, he got the money. <laughs> then another patient comes to my penthouse office. He says, Dr. Freud, I am a bird. I will fly around the block. And he jumps out the window. Well, why didn't you stop him? I thought he could do it. <laughs> Dr. Freud, what do you think is your most successful cure? Oh, well, one afternoon, a patient walks into my study. One look, I know he is a paranoiac with a touch of schizophrenia around the edges and whipped cream on top. <laughs> this poor soul was wearing a cloak of insecurity. What did you do? Shortened the sleeves and took in a little at the hemline. <laughs> Today, he is a perfect nut. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, you're amazing. No, I'm Freud. Well, as my patients often tell me, I must be off. Well, where are you going from here, doctor? I say, where are you going from here? I am returning to the University of Vienna to finish up my experiments on the mental disturbances of the common frog. 
the mental disturbances of the common fraud. Yeah, yeah, my enemies, Jung and Adler, they don't believe it either. They don't believe I could do it. They say Freud is a fraud. He's afraid of frogs, but they are wrong. I showed them Freud is not a fraud. He is not afraid of frogs. Frogs are afraid of Freud. <laughs> but, but doctor, that doesn't prove anything. What's the difference? It's better than Peter Piper picked a pick a pickle pop up. <laughs> How feet is in my head? How feet is in? Thank you, Dr. Freud. In the morning, 